Hey, how far is it to the farmer's market? About 15 minutes from here. This is an example of how sometimes we ask a question using one measure, the distance to the farmer's market, and answer it using a different measure. While it is convenient to describe the travel time to the market, it makes some assumptions about our mode of transportation and it doesn't actually use the units of distance. Body mass index, or BMI, is kind of like that for our health. BMI is used as an indicator of body fat to assess disease risk, but it doesn't actually measure body fat. So why is BMI the go-to marker? <sighs> hey Nourishable, I'm Dr. Lara. Body mass index, abbreviated as BMI, is used as an indicator for body fat. BMI is calculated by dividing your weight in kilograms by your height in meters squared to give you a value that determines your weight category. According to the CDC, a healthy weight BMI is 18.5 to 24.9, underweight as below 18.5, overweight as 25 to 29.9, and obese as greater than 30. You can use an online calculator to determine your BMI. Then you can avoid those pesky unit conversions. As you can see, BMI is really quick and easy to calculate, so it's been used to monitor obesity trends in populations and to screen patients in doctor's offices. Research studies have consistently demonstrated that a BMI in the obese range strongly correlates with many chronic diseases, including type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and metabolic syndrome. However, correlation is not causation, and it turns out that BMI has many caveats when used to screen for health conditions related to body fat. First, BMI can't differentiate between body fat and lean body mass, which is the weight of your bones, organs, and muscles. At the population level, BMI does correlate with body fat, but this isn't always the case at the individual level. For example, athletes tend to have more muscle mass, which is heavier than fat, so sometimes their BMI classifies them as overweight or obese despite being very healthy. The opposite is also true in elderly individuals who tend to lose muscle mass and replace it with fat, meaning that they may have a healthy BMI despite a high percent body fat. Second, the BMI weight categories were originally determined using research on white subjects. Different ethnicities have variations in body composition and metabolism, meaning that the obese BMI my range should be different by ethnicity. For example, if we look at a white woman, a black woman, and an Asian woman who all have the same BMI, the black woman would have a lower risk of type 2 diabetes, and the Asian woman would have a higher risk compared to the white woman. Third, BMI doesn't indicate body fat distribution. It's not just the percentage of total body fat, but rather where that fat is located on the body that plays a causative role in disease development. Central obesity is the accumulation of fat around the abdomen. This deep belly fat, also called visceral Visceral fat functions differently than the subcutaneous fat that is immediately under our skin. Visceral fat tends to be more inflammatory and less sensitive to the hormone insulin, factors which drive the development of diseases like type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. There are some alternative measures to assess body fat that are better predictors of disease risk. Waist circumference more directly measures central obesity, so it's a better reflection of body fat distribution at high risk areas. Currently, American organizations classify central obesity as a waist circumference greater than 35 inches in women and greater than 40 inches in men. The International Diabetes Federation has published separate classifications by ethnicity to take body composition variation into account. Waist circumference is not perfect, and there are many other more direct measures of body fat that are useful in research settings but not feasible at the population or clinical level. BMI is a convenient but inaccurate measure, especially when applied to individuals. Waist circumference is equivalently feasible to measure and may be a better tool at both the population and individual level because it more directly assesses the causative factors of central obesity. Both of these measures are meant for screening only and not as diagnostic tools. Regardless of your BMI or waist circumference, there are some behaviors that should be the foundation of all healthy lifestyles, like eating a balanced diet high in fruits and vegetables, limiting added sugars, and engaging in super fun physical activity. And that's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. If you like what you're learning, please share, subscribe, and ring the bell for new video alerts.